I love swearing. I've always quite... Oh, you all right? Sorry, what was that? I missed a bit of chat. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's not the telly. If you talk, I can hear. <laughs> now you're looking pissed off. You're thinking, I didn't press the red button. It's got all interactive. What? <laughs> What, what were you saying? Go on, say. I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. You thought... You... <laughs> she just said, I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened was... <laughs> OK, in a joke... A joke is like two stories, yeah? <laughs> and the first story makes you make an assumption about something. So the assumption people made about snake bite in, in that joke was that it was a snake biting you. But, but he, no. <laughs> That's the setup of the joke. So you made the assumption he's talking about a snake bite, a snake biting someone. In the second part of the joke, often known as the punchline, <laughs> what, you'll, what you'll find is that rug will be, will be whipped from under you and you'll realise that the assumption you made was erroneous. <laughs> Suddenly revealing a fact that was previously concealed is, is the nature of all one-liners, Badham. So, in essence, I was talking about both snake bites, the thing that happens when a snake bites you, <laughs> and also the drink. <laughs> no problem at all, it's lovely to help. <laughs> it's actually it's nice to have you here this evening, because I think one of the charity gigs I did helped pay for the minibus that brought you here. <laughs> Nice to see that money wasn't wasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her little heart. Uh, what are you making of the rest of the show? Are you just enjoying the spangly things? <laughs> <laughs> You're sniggering. What's your name, blonde lady? Who Move along? <laughs> what are you saying, Vicky? Dance for me, monkey boy. <laughs> Is he your fella? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what do you mean? He's either your fella or he isn't. Is he? Is he your fella? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, she's saying yes. <laughs> And you're saying no, and kind of, you're just look, you've gone really red and you look really embarrassed. <laughs> They're fuck buddies. <laughs> oh! I see what, how very modern. <laughs> how very 2005. So you're not going out with each other, but you are fuck buddies. <laughs> that is fantastic. Can we just all take a moment to, you know, congratulate that man there? <laughs> He's, a lot of work has gone into that. A lot of work has gone into that. He's had to buy a Cosmopolitan for a couple of years. <laughs> Sorry? Her and they'll know that you're a dirty little hussy. <laughs> The great thing about that is that he's convinced you that, yeah, we don't need a relationship. It's so... <laughs> it's so old-fashioned. I should be able to sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. And so should you, as long as it's just me. <laughs> when I say... <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot of jokes. <laughs> it's not every day I get to talk to a slag. Come on. <laughs> Now, I don't know where the mark is until I overstep it. That's my... <laughs> you just did. <laughs> that is juvenile. That, sorry, for those of you that didn't see that, it'll be on the DVD. <laughs> available at all good car boots. <laughs> Vicky's response to that, yeah, she's been called a slag at a show. That's not good in anyone's book, and I apologise for that unreservedly. But did you really need to do that? <laughs> Go 
God bless you. Now, I thought what we might do this evening, Birmingham, obviously you've all come out to see the show this evening. I'm very grateful for that. I love my job. I love the fact you come out to see me live. But we're all sort of friends here, and you've bought tickets to come and see me at the show. So I tend not to get heckled in the way that I used to get heckled when I used to play the clubs. When I used to play the clubs, you were unannounced. But, you know, the venue was bigger than, than the name, so people would come along, they wouldn't be invested. If they didn't like it, they would shout rude things out. I used to love that, proper aggressive heckling. I thought, well, why don't we? Because people tend not to do it at these kind of gigs, because people don't want to fuck up the evening for themselves or for anyone else. <laughs> Hold your horses just one second. <laughs> people tend, one notable exception, people tend not to want to fuck the gig up. But I thought it's quite nice, it's quite a fun thing, heckles. So why don't we have a heckle amnesty, a little two, three minutes, where you can just fill your boots, if you've got something abusive to shout, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> And fuck bum, that's such a weird thing to shout, fuck bum. <laughs> like the rudest words you know. <laughs> fuck cunt bum. Any other heckles? <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> Peter K was sold out, so you had to come here. <laughs> yeah. Unlucky. I bet he wouldn't have called you a cunt. Unfortunately, I'm not Peter Kay. <laughs> Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fantasy? Your girlfriend. My girlfriend? <laughs> well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> my girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. <laughs> yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> Is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's OK. <laughs> Can I just clarify? You are a beautiful lady, no disrespect to you. <laughs> but he heckled, I had to put him down. <laughs> and the only way to get to him was through you. <laughs> I like the way as well. I suggested your girlfriend wasn't good looking enough and you applauded. <laughs> yeah, you'll be using those hands later on, won't you? <laughs> When's the comedy on? <laughs> When's the comedy on? Really? What's your name, sir? What's your name? David. David? Yeah. What's your favourite colour, David? Blue. Blue, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the fairest way to deal with you, David. There are so many things I could say. <laughs> Number between one and eight, David. Six. Six. Okay, and you said to me, when's the comedy on? <laughs> It says, it says, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> These things don't lie, David. These things don't lie. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. She swallowed the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's come the furthest? Has anyone come from, like, a long way away? Overseas? Canvey or... Island. Canvey Island? <laughs> right, now, I know Canvey Island, so I happen to know that you've not come a long way from your home. You've just brought it with you. <laughs> Did you come with him? <laughs> no, good. Canvey Island's the furthest anyone came. Well, fuck you. <laughs> you were all in the area anyway, were you? What's that? Was that Dover? <laughs> but you were castrated before you got a chance to... <laughs> right. <laughs> were you worried about sounding silly, so you thought, well, I'll put on a ludicrous high-pitched voice? <laughs> that should sort things out, shouldn't it? <laughs> so you're a sailor, are you? <laughs> Imagine my surprise at your high-pitched voice. <laughs> 
What, sorry? Posh prick. <laughs> Posh prick seems a bit harsh. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your name, sir? Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> and you think I might be a bit posh? <laughs> All right, Miles. What's your favourite colour? Blue. Seems like the fairest way to deal with this. <laughs> you get some B L U E. <laughs> Number between one and eight, Miles. Four. Four. All right. Oh, says if you've come as a cunt, you've won. <laughs> Bit of good news. The most annoying thing my sister does is that show Chatty Man. <laughs> That's the most annoying heckle that I get at gigs. I like it when people join in, I like a bit of a heckle and a bit of fun. But the most annoying one I get is when I've set up a joke, just about to do the punchline, and someone goes, it's always, invariably it's the same thing, it's always, where's Alan? Where's Alan? It's not my, like, bet noir, it's just a bit annoying. Where's Alan? Where's Alan? <laughs> Who's at your house fucking your dad? <laughs> I think we all knew, including him, I think we all knew that was a trap. <laughs> I could feel you as one going, hold, hold, <laughs> hold. And then one brave soul over there said, no. I'm taking one for the team. <laughs> or rather, your dad is. <laughs> of course, not all gay people are happy, camp and fun. Some of them are lesbians. If you're a lesbian and you didn't find that funny, you're surprising no one. <laughs> Any others? Yeah. Yes. I thought I'd kick off with some jokes, Glasgow, not fuck about too much. <laughs> I'll pause for breath and say hello. How are you this evening, Glasgow? Are you well? <laughs> like an angry mob. <laughs> bloody, well, I thought we'd kick off properly. We're in a beautiful room, the Armadillo in Glasgow. Bloody marvellous. I thought we'd, we'd start things properly, yeah? Because everyone's dressed up. It's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of applause. Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's... That's probably enough. Looking round, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> and so your comment there is, I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I could come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out your mouth, is it? <laughs> Seems like a very weird thing from a quite a tough-looking man from Glasgow to say. Oh, you've not made much of an effort. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. <laughs> it's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do for a living. I think of little jokes in my head, and then I tell them to you so that you'll like me. <laughs> Sounds a bit tragic when I say... <laughs> what was that? It's not working. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Where are you? It's not working, man. Give us a wave. Yeah, what do you do, sir? Telecoms. You, <laughs> you do telecoms. <laughs> what, what do you do? Do you? I do you. I do you. <laughs> I do you telephone. <laughs> what, sorry? You build them in their work. <laughs> Ironically, you work in communications and can hardly. <laughs> can hardly string a fucking sentence together. <laughs> I read an article recently about British men's ultimate sexual fantasy, and it surprised me. The results of it surprised me. It was a proper survey. They asked 3,000 men their opinion. I'd like to do a little straw poll in here this evening, because the results of this, I was shocked. Ultimate sexual fantasies. Has anyone got one they wouldn't mind admitting to? Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba. It's a specific <laughs> person that you, that you would like to bone. <laughs> well, I happen to know Jessica Alba does an awful lot of work for charity. Maybe... <laughs> Thank you.
Who the fuck has a side part in? <laughs> You're gonna kick yourself when I tell you. <laughs> Me. <laughs> My crisps tasted rubbish. <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I became Latino there for a second. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had crisps. Did you see? I had crisps. Jimmy Con Carney crisps. The good people are walkers for comic relief. They brought out a flavour of my crisps, and it was me and Al Murray and Frank Skinner and Stephen Fry. And then they made these crisps, and every packet they sold, they gave five pence to the starving people in Africa. And I said to them, why don't you just send them the fucking crisps? <laughs> got to make more sense, hasn't it? Because they can't be as fussy about the flavours. <laughs> if you're starving, you're fine, aren't you? Well, these are a bit... Nah, fair enough. <laughs> what, sorry? I've got, I've got a big nose. I literally don't have a big nose. That's a weird... Ha that's like an insult you've heard someone else use. And you've gone, I've got a big fucking laugh. That's going to work best with a comic with a big nose. What's your name, sir? Thomas. What do you do, Thomas? You're a student. What are you studying? Uh, mathematics. <laughs> are you at school, Thomas? <laughs> I don't know if we should continue this any further because it's starting to feel like grooming. <laughs> are you at school? Yeah, I'm at school. <laughs> you got a big nose. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> any other heckles? Oh, what was that? That sounded good. Go on, what was that? <laughs> what was it? Pedophile. I'm a paedophile. <laughs> I was just fucking chatting to him. I've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? A Viking helmet. A Viking helmet? <laughs> what have you got? Two vaginas? <laughs> good, lovely. Any other ultimate sexual fantasies? Schoolgirl? And then you've pointed at your man. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a, we've got a special term for a schoolgirl fantasy now. We call it pedo. <laughs> Sorry, sir, do you like what do you like? Schoolgirl school girl teacher? Schoolgirl school teacher? though, really. <laughs> yeah, no, because the specialist term for the schoolgirl uni Yeah, it's a, you, you are a pedo. <laughs> It's no, it's good. Look at the positive. You get to be on a list. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Everyone in the neighbourhood knows where you live. That's convenient, isn't it? Do you make her dress up as a schoolgirl? She's done it. <laughs> <laughs> She's done it. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't wash her. <laughs> Bestiality. <laughs> Well, easy, easy. Let's just think this through, because bestiality, a lot of people just write off as a terrible thing. Let's look at both sides. Let's say you fuck a cow, and that could happen. <laughs> you sound like a nutter. <laughs> no, let, let's imagine you fuck a cow. You haven't actually harmed the cow. Cows are fucking enormous. <laughs> You're not going to trouble it with your tiny cock. <laughs> but, but, you know, but you've probably distressed the animal. Daisy's probably thinking, what the fuck is he up to? <laughs> On the upside, though, you've had a whale of a time, and if you have a baby with a cow, it'll be a minotaur. <laughs> mm. It's like Bully from Bullseye. <laughs> Just putting it into terms he'll understand. Any other ultimate sexual fancies? <laughs> An amputee. <laughs> it's not Paul McCartney, is it? I can't see. Are there any lesbians in? <laughs> no, my gay dar is pretty much honed in on this, this pair down there. Hello, how are you two? You all right? Yeah. Are, are you, I presume you're a couple? Married. Yes. You're married? Oh, congratulations. Fabulous. How long have you been married? Since October. Since October? My God, it's new and fresh. <laughs> have you even finished consummating the relationship? No. You don't know when you're finished, do you? That's one of the problems <laughs> with your lifestyle choice. We'll just put that on hold. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs>
<laughs> well, so you're married, you're committed to each other. Well, it's maybe a crazy question to ask you because you're in this long-term relationship and you love each other, but what would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> She's a definite no and you're a maybe. OK, good. <laughs> oh, I love my job. I tell you what, I'm going to do a test and see whether we've got any other sisters in the, in the room, see if there's any other lesbians. Sisters. Like I'm a lesbian, I've got the haircut, come on. <laughs> I look a bit like KD Lang, I could get away with it. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny because, you know, I do. I go to jimmycarr.com for dates and tickets and then, uh, you know, I guess, buy a ticket and come and see the tour. I laugh funny, so can you. Come and see me. <laughs>